Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 2 of this Let's Play Victoria 2. This is Prussia, the army with a state. In the last episode, we basically talked about how Victoria actually works. It's a complicated game, but it is now time to get into the meat of things and start working our way at this. So, there are a couple of things that we need to do in the pre unpause setup. First of all, you'll notice here we have 0 of 2. These are national focuses. The way that this works in this game is it allows you to tweak control over what a state is doing. So you can, for example, promote the number of craftsmen there are. So this will mean that your population will slowly drift towards being craftsmen, or you can increase the amount of production being done in a, an area. You can change the loyalty of the parties for... Um, elections or if you are a capitalist society you can encourage the growth of railroads for your capitalists in that area or factories also and if you are a colonial thing uh, no that's not colonial if you're in america i think immigrants is only really an american thing you can get people from the old world going to the new with an immigration focus so what are we going to do? Well, the first thing that we need to do, I think, in Berlin is change the focus to being craftsmen. We want our factories beefing up. So that's you, and then Schliessen is the other one. Where is Schliessen? Schliessen, there it is. And this is for the entire state. So a state is kind of like the latter EU4 expansions. So Breslau, sorry, Lignitz, Breslau, Opeln, Katowice, these are all in the Schlesen state. Um, Gotlitz is in Prussian Saxon, so Leipzig, uh, Chemnitz, and Dresden are in Saxon, Schlesen. Sorry, Saxon, Saxon. <laughs> and then in Brandenburg we have Pritzwalk, Preslau, Prenzlau, Berlin, Cottbus. I think that's it. And then, yeah, different areas have different stuff. The other thing that's going on is a lot of our satellites are now offering us military alliances. We are going to accept all of those. We are not going to send them our, ourselves, plus Switzerland would like an alliance. The other one I would like an alliance with is Great Britain. So we are going to form an alliance with you. They will accept. Send that. And I'd also kind of like to have one with Sweden. Will you accept? You will. Marvellous. And that is because, historically, Russia and Austria tend to have fairly close ties. So I want Britain just because they are the big, big bad Britain in this game. They are just generally hugely powerful compared to everyone else and Sweden has a a, uh, a border with Russia and tends to like fighting them and then we can deal with Austria ourselves okay so that's that the uh, next thing that we want to do is diplomatic so we want to start influencing Saxony for sure so let's go to the diplomacy thing here now influence I'm not amazing I've actually been watching a couple of let's plays by other people including a really good one by Schenner actually about creating a greater Germany in the shortest possible time. I don't intend to do that. He wasn't really caring about any of the long-term effects of his actions. I do, because I fully intend to play this through to 1925. But, um, yeah, we're going to be building up Saxony. Uh, that's what these buttons do. That allows you to basically divide up how much of your influence is going to the different areas. So we're going to list this by priority. And... Wartenburg. Do we care about Wartenburg? There is a way of seeing what provinces I actually need to form Germany. Decisions? Here it is. We want the North German Federation. While Germany was not united until the proclamation of the German Empire following the Franco-Prussian War, rising nationalism in the 19th century had meant that unification had been on the cards long before that, with the Frankfurt Assembly of 1848 being an important forerunner. By achieving a dominant position among the North German states, we can form the North German Confederation. And for that, I think we need all of the provinces in the North German Federation cause. Then any land that... All countries that have North German as a primary culture or is in Schleswig or is in the Prussian sphere of influence that is not Prussia will be inherited by the North German Federation. And we gain a core on all of the rest of Germany so that we can go and form Germany. The other thing which we want to do is steal Holstein 
away sorry schleswig holstein away from denmark currently they are a danish satellite so we probably want to start influencing that as well but i'm not going to do that just yet and apparently it's a nice idea to try and take alsace lorraine away from france it does indeed have a german core in it so we'd kind of like to take it does it actually say where the North German Federation cores are? No. So at some point we can do that North German Federation thing, but we can't yet. All cores, one of the following must be true. All of them must be owned by Prussia, or I must be the province owner. In, sorry, I must have them in my sphere of influence or the culture and not being North German. Can I see North German culture? Now, this is the bit that I'm a little bit unsure about. Sphere of influence nationality, that's probably the one. So everything here in this dark colour is the stuff that we want to take. So where's Württemberg? I don't think Württemberg is in it. I think that was in the south. There it is. So yeah, Württemberg we don't care about for the North German Federation. Once we go to the South German Federation, we will. So we kind of keep an eye on this. You are ours. You are ours. You are ours. So are you. So are you. Yeah, it's just Saxony that's not. Right, right. Yeah, Saxony is North German. And also, these have... Luxembourg is North German, and I think if we get the core, if we take Alsace-Lorraine, then we get that too. So Luxembourg is kind of an interesting one. Um, if you're able to pull them out of the... being a Dutch satellite? Really? Dutch? I didn't even think they could have them. They're not a great power. Okay, interesting. So there's that. The other thing that we want to do is start building some more troops. So we have these units. Each brigade, and this is 3,000 men. It's not 1,000 men like in EU4. They are 3,000 each. And we do want to train some more troops. So we can get irregulars. They're rubbish. Don't bother. We can get regular troops, which are okay. We can get some cavalry, which we don't have much of. And there are actually different types of cavalry outside of cavalry. So you generally don't want regular cavalry. They're not great. And then artillery, which become extremely important later on. Um, basically, they become heavy artillery, and that's what you used in World War One to actually do most of the damage, and that's why trenches were kind of built. Then you also get dragoons, which have high reconnaissance, or well, they have some reconnaissance. You have cuirassars, who have high attack, but become rubbish later on. And then hussars, who have high reconnaissance. Reconnaissance is important because that is the speed that you take provinces when you're attacking them. So you'll notice that... Planes, for example, have a very high reconnaissance. They're very good at taking provinces. Tanks just blitz through stuff. And then engineers have a bonus to attacking um, forts. Plus, they have a really high defensive value. So engineers are really good at holding the line. So right now, I think we want a couple of hussars. And then you can see where you can build them and how many troops each state can maintain. So currently we can maintain up to 60 divisions, sorry, 60 brigades. We have got 50 so far. And that is because of the number of soldiers you have in a state. So just like you can encourage craftsmen, you can encourage soldiers if you want a big army, which we probably will switch to eventually, but not yet. So we're going to get one in Stettin, one in Berlin, and I think we're going to get some more artillery. And then just the rest can be infantry like so. So these will get built over time. They will also cost small arms, canned food, luxury clothes. So the more troops you're building, the more resources you're using, the more money you're spending on those resources, but also if you produce those resources, then your factories will start making more money. The next thing we want to do is have a look at the budget. We want to increase the budget for education massively. I think we want to increase our admin slightly. We'll get them up to 60%, and that is because we want to attract more bureaucrats so that we have more bureaucratic efficiency yeah we want that up to the maximum of 39.7 and then military spending we also want to increase military spending 
to 80%, I'm going to say, so that we can encourage more people to become soldiers. The more money that you make as one of these professions, the more people will want to be of those professions. We're going to reduce the amount of money we're spending on our army right now and on our navy, and we're going to keep everything on the construction so we can spend money on that. We'll raise tariffs a little bit to balance out our economy. We shouldn't need to do too much, and we'll start earning more later on. I'm going to reduce the amount of ta taxing, the amount of taxation we have on the rich right now. We may change the uh, poor and the middle class depending on how our income goes. So we're now going to unpause for the first time and see what starts happening. Sweden's accepted the alliance. The UK has accepted the alliance. Fantastic. Sax Memmingen is offering an alliance. Oldenburg is. So these are all of our satellites offering alliances right now. So we are definitely losing money. Saxony is disc sorry, Austria has discredited us in Saxony. So apparently the thing to do here is to then stop raising relations and take an eye on when that ends. So the 5th of July is when we need to start raising there again. So the reason for that, and this goes into way more depth than I ever realized previously, so thank you to Shenra for explaining this. Uh, basically, if you stop raising relations, then Austria won't generally either so you will be left with a higher limit because it costs 25 to discredit someone so you want to raise it get discredited stop and because they will have spent 25 they will have gone backwards and they are not going to overtake you because when you're discredited you lose 75 percent of your influence generation in that province so there are various different actions you can take depending on your influence and your position so if you have higher relations with them you'll notice that they are neutral with everyone except for me who they are cordial with once they are friendly then you can form them into the satellite or do you need to be friendly in order to knock them out of sorry in, into your sphere i think we need to be friendly to kick them out of saxony sphere and then we can take them ourselves so you, there is a bit of juggling going on one thing i am going to do is increase relations with them because the higher your relations the faster your influence will rise So right now we're not going to invest anything in Saxony, we're just going to wait until the 5th of July. We are going to accept these alliances, thank you very much chaps, and just generally wait for things to happen. So we are probably losing a lot of money right now because we are building soldiers. You can see that these are the spending, we're spending a bunch on small arms, canned goods, luxury clothes and clippers because we are importing army stuff. Though so actually we probably should have this up a little bit, otherwise are we... I think this is just maintenance. Now we're actually spending on these goods to buy them in so that we get the troops built. Hamburg wants an alliance, of course, and we are really losing a lot of money. So we're going to start taxing the poorest even more. They need to take more of the burden of this society. And actually, we are paying the middle class a lot of money right now because a lot of them are clergymen. Clergymen are actually the educators. It's kind of a weird one. They should be teachers. I don't know why they're the clergy, but the clergy are the ones who do the teaching. Uh... And then bureaucrats. We don't want too many bureaucrats, but we want some. There is a point to county administration. Eh, no, we'll go down to 50. We don't need to pay that much in there. Military spending, want to keep high. Education spending, want to keep high. And then all of this stuff, that's fine. I think we may even need to raise... No, let's raise tariffs up to 20%. Because we are one of the more industrial nations. We can protect our own industries. Okay, we are still losing money. Saxe Weimar wants an alliance, of course. So the middle class are struggling a little bit. 21% of them are not getting their needs at all. That's including things like food, so they will be dying. However, the lower class do not have such a problem, so we're going to tax them even more. I don't want to go into debt at this stage. So let's have a look at how the production is working. So you will see that the, the black puppets are becoming more white as they get filled up. Um... These industries are not making much money. Paper is actually losing us, as is explosives and artillery. And I think losses have to either be taken by the capitalists, or if the capitalists can't pay it, then we have to pay them, which is why we may wish to shut them down eventually. Uh, one pound has been invested <laughs> into the fabric factory, so no one's particularly interested in getting that, although the number of interested investors is increasing as the factories make more money for those people. Um... This is actually kind of worrying how much money we're losing. I think we may need to reduce our military spending. And we'll definitely need to reduce you. Go down to 10%. We're still losing cash. But are they... Nope, that's still going up. Alright, we're going to have to keep on taxing the poor even more. 
until our balance is until our budget is balanced out. That's still really low. Our middle class is struggling. I think we're going to have to start taxing the the rich. We'll go up to a 20% tax for you. That's still losing. 85, I don't really want to go higher than this. Okay, for now that's going to be acceptable. Adolf Dietersberg, a German educator, laid down principles for the teaching of children that aimed at making them conscious, thinking, responsible citizens. His ideas got him suspended in 1874. Oh, sorry, 1847. So that's given us three prestige, so prestige has gone up a little bit. And then almost 200 research, which will be a big boost to the amount of tech that we have. Boom. Okay, not a big boost. A boost to the amount of tech we have. In fact, I'm going to increase your tax to 30%. Sorry, rich people. I know I want you to starting new factories and stuff for me, but I can't afford you right now. And we're going to reduce... I don't want to reduce my education, really. No, we're making money now. It's fine. Our tariffs are going up and up and up as we're exporting... Or as we're... Our people are importing more stuff. But the longer that we squeeze these guys, the worse it gets, because the less spending money they will have to spend on factories. So now that we can actually tweak their income a little bit... We can reduce that, which will actually give them more spending power to buy the more expensive imported goods, meaning that we can get more money out of tariffs. So that's how we're going to do it. And we're going to let a bit of a, a surplus accumulate. We're going to be fiscally responsible. We're not modern economists. Okay, so six of the ten units have now been built. We've got four more still coming. We could start building some more ships. I think we start out with three clippers. Clipper transports are your regular transports. They're fairly slow. You probably want to replace them with steamer transports later on, but those are way more expensive. Paraguay has accepted peace with Brazil. Okay. And we have a couple of unemployed craftsmen, but that's usually as they become other people leave being craftsmen and become something else. So Schlesen is losing a lot of money. I kind of I need to be careful about the number of unemployed here. Oh, the problem is you're not importing enough steel. I see. Yeah, steel and explosives are expensive. So our glassworks is starting to make a lot of money. More and more people are pouring into that. Which is good, but these industries are definitely losing money. And if they lose too much money, then they will just get shut down. Oh, now they're starting to make money. So they've obviously found a source of these items. But finding the raw materials is clearly providing problems. Right, is it the 5th of July yet? No. Oh, wait, is it? No, crap, it is. Saxony. Prove relations with Saxony, or get influence with Saxony. Austria's been doing it slowly. Once they hit 25, then they'll probably try and discredit us again. So we do need to keep an eye on that. Frankfurt wants to do that. And the other thing I want to do is justify a war against France. For Alsace-Lorraine. Justify war. I think it's a quiet state. It will increase infamy by 11. Isn't there one which allows you to do this, but for something you have a core on? Liberate a country? No. No, I think it's going to have to be a quiet state. We'll start just, just justifying for that. We're still making some money. What's this? Bankrupt factories. Paper mill has now gone bankrupt, which is kind of surprising. So we can now choose to just destroy it, or we can bail them out for 1,200. I'm going to leave them shut for the moment, because I want all the people that were working here to move over to these places. <coughs> oh, bollocks. We lost 10 in for me. Because we were detected justifying. That's actually really quite bad. Because infamy burns down fairly slowly. And there is like a hard limit of 25. If you go over 25. Then people become very upset. And everyone declares war on you in a coalition war. Austria has discredited us in Saxony. So at this point we are going to stop in Saxony. Austria is once again not increasing. We have stopped. And that is going to end... 11th of May, 37. Okay. Right, we want an alliance with Hess Kessel. With the two Sicilies, that's an interesting one. And Brazil. I'm not sure I want one with Brazil. 
Okay, so tech is going through. More and more people are becoming craftsmen, especially in the glass glassworks. That is generating a lot of money. When it's up, when it's supplied, the artillery factory produces a lot. But it does have a few problems. Mission to France. In a rather embarrassing blunder, several of our soldiers in uniform of France have been caught while trying to sneak across the border. While the rumours that their task was to stage a border incident to justify our invasion was totally unfounded, it would be wise not to provide any fresh fuel for the fire right now. We get a reduction to Casus Belli acquisition for of twenty five no, of twenty five percent. Oh well. Do we wish to finance some more money towards this? So actually, they are buying the resources already, but they have not got the the raw financing yet. But we are getting more and more investors, and that's probably because their taxes are kept very, very low, meaning they have a lot of spare cash to invest in new industries. Our middle class is getting less and less squeezed. You can see that some of them are getting their needs fulfilled. So I think we can probably re reduce your taxes even further. Tariffs continue to go up as our people get more and more money themselves. They can import the more expensive luxuries and other things that we don't produce. Newspaper, breakthrough in Hanover, Ionian research, Arc de Triomphe. Prices rise. The last 36 months, the price of luxury clothes has steadily risen. Capitalists and artisans worldwide scramble to produce more luxury clothes to meet the ever-increasing demands of the market. And we can increase our opinion here. So because we have got more than 50% influence here, we can improve our opinion, which means that we are now friendly, which means it's going to be the next stage, which I think we need 100 influence, we can then shift Austria out of being, we can shift them out of Austria's sphere of influence, which is good because Saxony is actually, despite its size, is one of the strongest nations in Germany right now because they are highly industrialized. That paper mill is still closed. Do you want to open you yet? No, that glass works is making more and more money. Mexico has accepted an offer of peace from the USA. Status quo. Interesting. Now the other thing that we can see up here, and this is super useful, is the things that we are exporting the most of and importing the most of. So we are exporting cattle, grain, and coal, and we are importing tea, wool, and alcohol. Alcohol is used by armies, so because we have a fairly large standing army, we get alcohol. We have to import alcohol, rather. Schlesen is getting a lot of unemployed. I would quite like to change your focus. So we're going to increase the focus in Norderhain to being craftsmen. Oh, thankfully, we can do that here. Cool. So we're going to get more craftsmen here because Schlesen is just struggling, especially the artillery factory because there's just not enough steel and stuff in the world right now. So if we're looking at trade, then the price of steel is probably rising. Yeah. Or is it iron they need? Hang on. No, it's steel. So there just won't be very many steel um, factories yet. So if we click on steel, we can see the price is slowly but surely rising, indeed. And then explosives, probably even more so. Yeah, explosives have absolutely gone through the roof. Which is why building artillery becomes less and less viable. Because there is a shortage of the uh, raw materials. An age of liberalism. While Napoleon and his armies have been defeated, the fundamental ideas of the French Revolution have not been. In Germany, the old crowns of the Holy Roman Empire have been wrought to naught, and the feudal contracts that of old are replaced by Napoleonic civil codes. Everywhere in Europe, in coffee houses and universities, the ideas of liberalism, political reform, freedom of speech, and the rights of the peoples rather than of monarchs are providing again the old proverb that there is no stopping an idea when the, whose time has come. Minorities long yoked under crowns and scepters are waking up to the realisation that fate is theirs to make. And across faraway oceans, the riches of Africa and Asia beckon. As the dust settles on Waterloo, Europe stands again at the beginning of a new era, an age of liberalism. So pop consciousness increases. Consciousness is actually a good thing because that increases the amount of reforms your people want. And the militancy and non-colonial, that's bad because that increases unrest. And unrest in this game can be painful <laughs> uh, as you get uprisings and things so all populace in Prussia who are not in a colonial state will become 5% more liberal and gain 1% consciousness that's not necessarily a bad thing because if we look at the politics you have a whole bunch of reforms so we start with basically no reforms done which is why I have no minimum wage limited work day but as we get more especially in the trade unions then we can get more of this stuff and these are generally good things like they will cost your state more money which is bad, but
but will mean that your people, for example, are happier or have more money themselves, like minimum wage does that, or school system means you have more education, which means literacy increases more quickly. So, yeah, good things, and healthcare means less people die, meaning your population grows faster. Raymond wants an alliance. I have not been keeping on the ball of uh, Saxony. All right, I need to be careful of Austria. Austria is clearly trying to raise relations in several of these places, and that's not good. Uh, but the one I want to keep an eye on is Saxony. Where are you? Austrian Saxony. I am no longer banned here, so we're going to increase. That's only a day or two over, so that's fine. However, you are trying to raise an Anhalt, which I don't particularly like. Although you are currently hostile in Anhalt. You are neutral in Braunschweig, so we could increase... We can discredit them in several of these places. I don't think we particularly need to right now. Tripoli has accepted an offer piece from the Ottomans. The Ottomans have annexed them. Okay, we're at 10k now, so we have plenty of money. I think our bu budget is pretty well balanced at this stage. So that is final. Though we are losing military because we are not paying our troops enough. So let's increase... Oh man, yeah, that's where a lot of our spending was. Let's increase defense spending up to 90%. And then let's start charging our middle class again. A little bit more money to cover that. Because we are losing soldiers, which is why the number of uh, brigades is reduced. It's because there are less soldiers, so they can't actually support all of those troops. I don't think you lose them, but you don't get them reinforced as they take combat damage. Okay, the artillery factory shut down. That's probably not a bad thing. And the fabric factory got the funding it required, so it is now being built. No cost on my part, which is great. I am very tempted, though, to open the paper factory again. No, we're going to leave our people to go to these. Like That glassworks is making bank right now. So that is fine. We have got the acquire state against France, so we can declare war on them, which I would like to do. Okay, so uh, Russia and Austria are doing that. Ottomans are here. Don't care about that. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. I just need to keep an eye on Saxony. Because we have still not been kicked out. Austria is raising 213. But I think we're actually going to get it high enough that we could just ban... Or that we can just de... Thingy-majiggy. Austria there. Alright, so we are in a position to go to war with France at this stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather my troops into this area. In fact, you know what? Screw it. We're going to select everyone. I'm going to have you all moving over here and then we'll sort out our armies once that is done. We're going to be losing money during the war. So at this stage I do want to balance out my economy again if we can. I think we're going to have to reduce our education funding. Sorry. And also, admin, I don't really want to touch you. We're going to have to increase our land spending, which is going to massively increase the amount of money we are spending. So tariffs might need to go up to 25. But actually, the taxes on our people are still relatively low. Because I want them to have money to buy luxuries and stuff. We can remove Saxony from their sphere of influence. We are at 100. They didn't discredit us or anything else. There must be someone else here that they are trying to remove. So we are going to remove from sphere. Boom. So they are now no longer owned by Austria. Meaning that we can then take them as a sphere ourselves. And they are not even trying to compete here. So that's good. Alright, you are suffering attrition. Let's group you together and then split you up. In half, sure. And then in half. We don't have that many more troops to come in. Split you in half. We still have a couple more troops coming in. Group you, split in half. Couple more. 
Okay, let's raise our military budget. Thankfully, we do have a fair amount of money in reserve. Group you, split, move them over there. Then this should be good enough. And now we can declare war on France. We wish to acquire the state. We want Alsace-Lorraine. We are going to call our allies. We need only 16 war score. It's a fairly easy war, actually. And here we go. So let's shift our troops to go and grab these provinces. And we'll keep a couple in reserve in case they decide to try and fight us. Let's turn down the speed. And Switzerland refused. Sicily's refused. All the minions have accepted. Hamburg has. Sweden refused. The UK accepted. So Sweden refused. Switzerland refused. So what we're going to do is immediately try and form an alliance with them again, because apparently there is actually very little penalty, but the big one, Britain, has joined. So that should help. Classics rediscovered. And when I read of Athens of Pericles, the progressiveness of these ancient societies always astounds me. And here I am, thousands of years later, a less free man than they back then. The 19th century saw a resurgence of interest in the ancient classics. Many of the ancient societies, Roman Greece, were looked to for inspiration by liberal thinkers seeing in them proto-examples and experiments in those same traditions of freedom that they sought to implement in the modern era. A local reform club has republished some select pieces of ancient literature that are becoming high fashion among the educated elites of Prussia. So we can lose a bit of prestige and all of our rich strata, so all the rich people, so that's the capitalists and the aristocrats, gain militancy. Or all rich strata become more liberal and gain more consciousness. I actually want them being more liberal. We've actually dropped down a place in the Great Powers. That's not good. Oh, the USA has increased because our industry is growing very slowly. Who's Russia fighting? Are we fighting Russia? Have I made a bit of a whoopsie? Russia, France, and the Papal States. We have. Okay, that's not a problem. I mean, we just shift some of these guys over to the other flank. So we'll shift you to here, you to here, and you over there. That's fine. And also, how's Saxony doing? Totally fine. Like Austria's not even trying to compete here, so we should be able to take over Saxony without any real issues. So when can I request another alliance? I can do that on the 25th of November. And then you can apparently just call them in again, which is kind of funny. 23, 24, 25. And somehow France has actually managed to land in Britain. Britain, what are you doing? Where's your navy? Shocking. Okay, we are losing a lot of money. I think for the duration of this war, sorry rich people, I'm going to have to tax you. And also you guys, I'm going to bump you up to 80% and you as well. You're at 90. I don't really want to go higher than 90, otherwise you can't afford your most necessary stuff. Although that's true. The tax efficiency is their actual tax rate. Yeah, effective tax is 20%, so we could actually tax the maximum. And it wouldn't kill them. We're going to do that. And I'm going to reduce the education spending even more, down to 50%. For the duration of the war, it can go up again after that, just so we don't completely run out of cash, because that would be kind of bad. I think our admin's going to go down to 40. Education's going to go... Screw it. We're going to cut education funding while we're fighting. And we're going to increase your funding, or your... to 100. Yeah, that will do. 25th, yes it is. Let's go and send another alliance offer to you which they are saying they will accept, and to the Swiss, which they will also accept, and to the two Sicilies, which they will accept. So that should be all of our alliances re-established, and we could recall them into the war. Plus, we just got our technology, so positivism is just finished. Idealism we can't get because we are still three years away. However, we can get functionalism, which is going to further increase our education. However, I think at this point I want to increase my diplomatic influence, reducing mining and farming uh, stuff as well, or increasing those outputs so we have less people necessary in those industries, so that we start pushing more and more people towards the industry. All of Saxon stuff is closed. That's not good. Um... 
Although it will just mean that these people will move elsewhere, hopefully filling up Brandenburg's industries. You know what, that's okay. I'll, I'll let them just move. That's fine. Okay, and with that, I think I'm going to end this episode. So, thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying this series so far, then please do hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, then do consider subscribing. And if you have any tips or advice for me, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.